Hey everybody, welcome back to episode six of Isolation, where I'm out here tracking all the things I'm doing during the pandemic, whether it's building new trails, building new bikes, riding local lines, just trying to stay busy and stay close to home while all this stuff is going on. I'm two weeks into building one of the coolest trails I've ever worked on because the dirt here is so amazing. I'm in like really awesome terrain with natural, perfect grade. And it's been like quite the journey so far. It's been going really quick, honestly. I've been coming out a few days a week, really hammering things out and just the, the dirt I'm working with is blowing my mind. It's so nice to work with. It packs so well. And now that the rain is finally clearing up, today is the day I can finally test out what I've done so far. Cannot wait. Okay, I'm back out here and things are looking great. I got the landing zone for that first step down finished. It's all packed in really nice, nice and smooth, nice and wide. I opened up a bit of space over here and there's still too much of a bump right against where my bike is sitting here to make this jump rideable. But my thoughts are, I'm gonna have a lot of speed when I land this if the gap works. And that means that I'm gonna have to make this thing way bigger. So I decided just to like leave this rough bump here for now. And what I'll do is test this out today. If the speed's good and I have like a really good understanding of how fast I need to go for this hit, then I will be able to like really decide how I'm gonna build it next. Because it potentially might end up being like way back here and a lot bigger than it is right now, which would be really sick. Like honestly, the bigger the better because I wanna fit a couple really big gaps like close together through this whole forest. Like the way the grade is working and the landscape is just like carved out, it would be so sick to just have like jump and a berm into another fast jump into another berm. It's like, um, just like imagining like the speed and flow that it would give you. So that's really what I want. So I'm really hoping this gap isn't too much of a push but let's go take a look at it up close and uh, I'll show you what I think. Now that we've had a few days of rain, that dirt's really settling in. It's like pretty rock solid. So here's the gap from the top. It does feel a little long considering the speed I'm gonna get with this like pretty tight rolly run in. But I mean, it's, I think it's pretty low consequence to come up short and I really wanna push it so it works this way because if this works like, wow, it's gonna be such a good setup. All right, so there's only one way to do it. Let's test it out. Let's see how this goes. Drop it in. First run. <laughs> oh, it feels way too slow. It's just like so soggy still. That felt way too slow, but I don't know. I think I'll just like take a few pedals in and and once this is packed, it probably will work. But it's definitely a lot tighter feeling than I expected. Okay, round two. Oh! Oh! It works! <laughs> That's sick. It definitely like shot me really far left though. Look how far left I went there. I'm like on the very edge. I couldn't have gone anymore <laughs> to the left there. Let's see where I took off on the takeoff. <laughs> and this is the other time. No, so the first one I did was this where I stopped yeah. and I went a little more outside so my angle would be better for the takeoff. So this one is before you took the actual... You yeah, exactly. You were just doing a run-in? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, but I knew like the angle was good on the run-in but I felt really slow. So I, that kind of stopped me from going more outside because the more outside you go, the more speed you need to clear it, right? Because it yeah. makes it bigger when you're out here versus down here. So I went inside, but that made it harder for me to clear the jump. Or it made it easier for me to clear the jump, but harder to line up. So before I reshape this jump completely, I'm gonna try going off more center on it. This jump might not be that big, but I'm really relieved that it works because it's definitely got like kind of wonky shapes to it. The lineup's really strange. And I was a little nervous about how well it would work. So it's such a relief that it's working. All right, third try, let's go. <laughs> oh. Feels better every time. That's so good. It's a, I like just like knowing how to ride it. I don't think I'm even gonna change it honestly because like it could be a little more down than like really line you up perfectly, but I kind of like how it's a little weird and you have to know what to do. Oh, it's super cool. Great way to start it off.
I'm excited, relieved, and just like more stoked than ever to know that this whole line works. The dirt's packing in really well for how fresh it is. And it's gonna be really sick the way it's working out. I have a really good sense of speed now for that second hit. I don't think it's gonna get a lot bigger because you can really speed check easily, but I'm definitely gonna build the whole thing up higher and it's gonna be way more of a step down than it is now. Okay, so now that I'm done out here and I know it works, I'm gonna take a break from digging today and go up to Cumberland and ride some of my favorite laps up there before the rain hits because it looks like a storm's about to roll through again. Our little break of nice weather is about to come to an end. Okay, let's get up there. To kick things off, I want to show you my new riding pack from Hydroflask. I'm really stoked on this thing. It's called the Downshift, and it's a lot smaller than the one they had last year, but it's like really efficient with space. And I want to show you something about this bag that is super cool, and not many bags have this feature, and that is the insulated bladder. So if you look inside of it, the bladder is actually insulated. It's like insulated on the inside of the bag and the bladder itself, if you look at the lining in here. So that is really cool. It even has like an ice fill line, so where to keep your ice. And this holds two full liters. So that's really cool. And then some of the pockets in here as well, like it's got a nice mesh pocket there for a few things. And then you can like fit stuff under here. So I got my chest mount for my GoPro. And then the inside too, like of the main flap has a bunch of rad little pockets like that and more mesh compartments. And then the outside, a nice small little pocket where I can keep my wallet and keys when I'm out riding. I really like this design. I haven't found like many bags that have a really nice set of pockets like this. Sit off your back pretty far. So if you see here, like there's some space between your back and the bag itself, which is really nice. And yeah, that's the bag. All right, let's get into the fun stuff. I made it to the top just in time for the rain to hit, but hopefully it cools off before I start recording. I'm up here at the top of Cupcake in Cumberland, and this is one of my favorite trails and kind of my go-to lap when I come here to ride because it's one of the most direct straight ways down the hill. A lot of the trails out here in Cumberland aren't very steep and they're really flowy and a lot of fun, but they're just like not that challenging for me. I find this to be a little more challenging. It's very fast technical and it's a super good time. It's pretty much the most direct way you can get down the hill. And then from Cupcake, I go down to Baker's Dozen and then hook off into Knuckers, which is like, pretty fall line as well and kind of bench cut the whole way through with like steep catcher turns. It's super fun, like for the 30 minute plus climb, you're down really quick. The rain's coming down even harder now. I'm just hiding under this tree, waiting for it to pass because my shot will get ruined in like two seconds if I try to shoot this right now. Oh man, crazy weather this week. I can't wait any longer, so let's see how this goes. Cupcake. Slippery. Oh yeah, that's wet. Okay. I have no clue how much of that you actually could see, but camera's cleaned off. Let's keep going.
Now we're at the top of Baker's Dozen, still pouring rain, and this trail's got a big old slippery wall ride on it, so I might have to avoid that. I'll make the call when I get to it, but yeah, fun short little trail. Here we go. Let's get it. Good way of breaking the new pedals, just smash them with rocks. And that's a wrap. I'll have to show you guys Cupcake when it's a dry day so you can actually see what's going on. It's such a sick trail. All right, that's it for this video. I'll see you next time. Peace out.